Thank you for tuning in to the Peoples and Dragons. If you enjoy the content we provide, then subscribe, like, and maybe join in on the action at www.pndrpg.com. Haven City, an ugly city. Episode 6 Survey Day Uprising. We see Anarchy 12 standing in front of a clear glass inside of his lab. Behind it, a bound and injured green extraterrestrial hooked up to hundreds of wires and devices. Anarchy speaks through the thick glass. Your technology, your power. What more do I need from you, creature? You're disposable. Both rows of the being's pitch black eyes open all at once and peer at Anarchy 12. A high pitch frequency begins to come from the creature that translates into a language Anarchy can understand. The being tells Anarchy that they are gods of your existence, and without them, he and all gamma types would not exist. Anarchy laughs. <laughs> you're green, but you're no god. Anarchy steps forward so the creature can see his new tech in all of its glory. Anarchy is wearing an all black bodysuit, as black as the void with tiny specks of green glowing matter and faint warping nebulas that can be seen deep within the suit. It was like staring into the universe itself. A skeletal frame made of lightweight yet incredibly durable metal runs along the arms, legs, and ribcage of the exosuit, fully covering Anarchy from toe to neck. Anarchy 12 had did what most would consider impossible and forged a suit from the tech and design of the alien's craft that he captured, along with the knowledge included, resulting in a product of unprecedented technology. Anarchy says, if technology is what makes you gods, then what does that make me? The creature's face was incapable of expressing its astonishment. However, its hesitation and change in pitch of its voice said it all. The alien educates Anarchy on the eternal contract made with the Servi Day in order to produce the ultimate Gamma Type. Anarchy 12 interrupts and states that he is the Alpha Gamma Type. The alien does not disagree and admits that they may have indeed overlooked and underestimated the capability of his Gamma Mutation. A mutation that circumvented their own technology by way of technopathic control. The alien reveals that its kind are called the Uncount, and their purpose is to create superior life. It then requests that Anarchy 12 joins their covenant and seat above all Servi Day. It then requests that Anarchy 12 join their covenant and sits in a seat above all Servi Day. Anarchy 12, unimpressed by the offer, reminds the Uncount that it is in no position to employ anyone. Suddenly, surveillance cameras reveal that hundreds of alien craft appear all around Anarchy's floating base, all undetected by his defenses. Gateways then open up all around the alien creature as more of its kind, the green gods, walk through them and begin to free it from its confines. It then says to Anarchy, You have proved your power to us. This will be addressed. Join us now and help us see the final phases of Emerald Prophecy through. Anarchy 12 realizes that these beings are far more advanced and capable than he thought. He feels inclined to join. 
Anarchy 12 agrees to assist the Uncount, but will only answer to them. The Uncount opens up a gateway next to Anarchy and tells him of a very important emerald that is under attack and needs to be protected at all costs as it is the focus point of the ritual. They add that another powerful yet failed G-type and product of the ritual has been sent there by them and will need some assistance. Go there and join it in its efforts to secure the emerald. We cut to a close-up of Kai Excalibur's eyes, blazing with an intense and corrupt flame as he lets out a bellowing scream that no natural human could make. His voice paralleled with deep and bassy roars stemming from the ritual abomination sharing his body. A massive wave is unleashed from all directions of his body as he levitates way high in Haven's sky. The waves of fire crashing and ripping through Hope's aircrafts, trying their best to combat him above a massive emerald crusted into the ground below. Despite the civil war occurring throughout Haven, Hope agents have been deployed to deal with the immediate threat caused by the Servi de cultists who have been seemingly emerging from nowhere and have unleashed a coordinated attack on the people of Haven. All throughout the city, Servi de cultists and those masquerading as innocent civilians have done away with their disguises and begin weaving dark Takana spells outright slaughtering everyone in their path. Even on live television during a Midnight Royale boxing match in the 13th district, the referee unleashes a spirit tentacle from his mouth and sucks the soul right out of one of the combatants in front of all of the spectators to see. Servi de cultists stand upon the rooftops of buildings firing bolts of dark tacana at flying vehicles out of the sky and slitting the throats of pedestrians with their tacana knives below. Hope agents arrive on the scene to counter them with magic tech designed to combat the supernatural. A giant white tank comes rolling down the street and fires a great white beam that eradicates an entire roof full of cultists. We see a woman running out of a clothing store from a crazed cultist slashing at her with his Takana knife. She runs right into a Hope agent securing the street and falls onto her back. Please save me, she screams, bleeding profusely from her wound on her shoulder and arm. The large Hope agent, clad in high-tech armor and white tunic, draped over, very reminiscent of Templars from the days of old, roughly picks her up by her arm, revealing her wound. A deep female voice with a slight metal twang exits from the Templar-like helmet. You are compromised. The Hope agent unsheathes a large great mace, its blunt end glowing white hot, and swings it into her body, shattering the entire half of her torso, killing her on impact. She then tosses her to the side and steps into an oncoming cultist with a shoulder charge, then uppercuts him with her Hope mace, taking his head clear off. Hope agents were brutal and unforgiving. A possessed Kai Excalibur soars through the sky leaving a dense streak of dark fire making it incredibly difficult for the flying Hope aircrafts to tell him. With both hands, he hurls massive fireballs the size of wrecking balls toward enemies of the Servi Day, who are all blown to pieces from the massive meteoric impact. Several streams of bullet sprays come firing across the horizon from the formation of four Hope Jets, but are deflected by waves of intense heat coming from Fire's body. Fire dives under and around the gunfire and lands on top of one of the jets and with both hands reaches through the cockpit glass melting it like butter, along with the pilot's helmet as Fire pulls him out by his head right out of his seat. The flame, so intense, melts his helmet casing his head completely while screaming and suffocating. Fire then ignites him on fire and tosses his corpse into the other jet, taking off the wing, sending it flying into a building. Suddenly, a Hope agent, wearing a full mechanized suit, grabs Fire from the back and begins to bear hug Fire and attempts to crush him. 
his armor seemingly fire resistant. Fire lets out a monstrous roar and begins to emit noxious and unnatural gas from his body, a new and an innate trait stemming from the corrupt and aberrant creature fused within him. The fumes aggressively seep into the eye and mouth holes of the agent's mechanized suit, causing the agent to let go completely as he begins to gag and choke. The acidic and toxic gas immediately makes him weak, lethargic, and begins to melt the agent from the core of his body until his entire body becomes a soupy goop and starts to trickle through the holes of the suit, falling to his death. The monstrous and possessed fire begins to roar and charges at his next target who appears before him through the toxic smog. Anarchy 12 appears on the scene, hovering in the air, surrounded by a new and improved king's hand, all donning the same new alien design. Fire charges toward Anarchy 12 in a fiery rage, but this time, instead of the android stepping forward, Anarchy 12 flies toward fire, both on a collision course with each other. Anarchy 12's exosuit flickers, and upon it appears an extra coating of solar shielding that warps into existence out of nowhere, rendering him resistant to the increasing heat and approaching flames. Anarchy 12 grabs fire by the neck as toxic gas begins to escape from his flames, but are immediately nullified when yet another device warps into place and mounts on Anarchy 12's shoulder and begins to suck in all of the gas being created immediately. Another gadget appears on Anarchy's exosuit in the form of a giant robotic arm and grabs Fire's entire body, holding him in place. Anarchy's suit is powered by Prophet Technology, a far superior artificial intelligence operating from the center of Sector 12. It is immediately able to analyze Anarchy's situation and create devices specifically designed to be a solution for the problem, then warps it onto his exosuit instantaneously. With Fire restrained, Anarchy 12 begins to try and reason with Fire to calm him down as his robotic arm slowly begins to melt as the heat increases to that of a thousand suns. Anarchy 12 informs Fire of his allegiance and position within the survey day. He then informs Fire of what their current objective is. Fire feels the nearby emerald resonate within him and confirms that Anarchy is saying the truth. Fire comes to his senses and disengages from attacking Anarchy. An entire fleet and the last bulk of Hope forces arrive to the area and begins to fire upon Anarchy, Fire, and the Great Survey Day Emerald. Fire doesn't hesitate and jets toward the enemy forces. Anarchy 12 snaps his fingers and commands the King's Hand to attack. Ground forces huddle together chanting and gather a mass of spiritual energy to fire at the Emerald. The Rook lands in the center of their summoning circle and leaps onto the shoulders of the lead Hope Battle Priest and then jabs dual blades made of pure energy into his shoulders, then hand spins off of him carving his head off of his shoulders, then nimbly somersaults off of him toward the next target. A Hope Rifleman fires a spray of photon beams at the Rook as it flips and leaps around in mid-air, but the beams crash into a radiant green field absorbing the projectiles entirely. The Rook then lands and spins around on the ground capoeira style as razor sharp energy blades extend from its feet and begin decapitating the legs of two Hope agents who failed to outmaneuver the Rook's incredible speed just before being blown to pieces by fireballs raining from the sky. Three flying agents in armored suits engage Anarchy 12 in mid-air combat, but are immediately intercepted by the Queen, whirling her energy katanas in each of her several arms. However, by being too slow and outclassed, each of the agents are all eventually brutally diced into clean pieces. The King charges into one of the tanks, sticks its arm right through its exterior, and rips out the entire cockpit seat with both pilots still buckled in, who are immediately taken out in two swift headshots from above, shattering their helmets apart as brain matter explodes into the air. 
the bishop leaps up from its perch and begins running along the rooftops while taking out hope agents one by one, headshot by headshot, when suddenly a hope elite lands in front of it, wielding gauntlets that it smashes together to activate them, turning them into glowing white gauntlets of destruction. <laughs> The Prophet AI reads this and warps a large energy bayonet onto the Bishop's sniper rifle as it immediately lunges toward the unsuspecting elite and plunges it into its heart, pulls it out, then stabs the bayonet back into the elite's neck and fires the sniper rifle, blowing the elite off of the roof. The large battleship looms over the Survey Day Emerald and sets the sights of its holy light cannon onto it. We cut to the ship's captain patiently waiting for the right moment to command his men to blast the holy light cannon, when suddenly he begins to swat at his hair and throws his hat on the ground from feeling something crawling in it. Every person on board begins to fidget and swat at themselves from something unseen crawling within their gear. The captain looks at his hand and sees a small swarm of bots skipping across his hand like fleas. When suddenly, everyone on the deck begins to be blown apart by miniature explosions igniting from under their clothes, followed by a much larger explosion. We then see the entire inside deck erupt into flames and soon after the colossal ship begins to crash toward the ground. As the last of the Hope agents are mopped up by fire in the King's hand, Anarchy 12 hovers above all of the Survey Day cultists who are in awe of their new leader as thousands of alien crafts begin to appear through warp gates opening all around the sky. The cultists all fall to their knees and praise him and the Green Gods as the Emerald Prophecy is coming to completion. Thanks for watching Peoples and Dragons, the interactive RPG game show. I encourage everyone to jump into our comment section to participate in the lore contests, as well as visit our Patreon page to learn what perks come with your support for our machine. Peace.